Hi, my name's Sean Taylor. That's my friend Chris Ford, a.k.a. The Objective Geek. And he, you look confused, Chris. What's on your mind? Welcome to Avatar The Last Podcasters. And no, you know what? Don't welcome Chris. Why do you look like that? <laughs> we got to get to the bottom of this. And today we're going to, uh, today we're reacting to some news. We had a couple of bits of news come through today that directly impact this, uh, this show, of course. And uh, good or bad. I don't even know how to react to it yet, Chris. The first time you told me yeah. was the first time that I had heard it. I'm still kind of processing how I feel about it and how much I, how much I think it'll affect me. But uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about a couple of news bits and then a couple of other bits and, and that's it. But Chris, first, how have you been? What have you been up to? What figures you painting? I am fine. I'm starting to get sick, though. My throat hurts. Yeah, I'm fatigued a little bit. Uh, but fine. Fairly fine. <laughs> I haven't painted action figures in a while. Even though I'm working on the Raza Ghoul statue for like the last two months, I'm just slowly chipping away at. Uh, but I did get some, speaking of statues, I got some new avatar statues. I got a, start with the Iroh. Got this new Iroh statue from Diamond Select. Very, very Dragon of the West. I like that, yeah, I like that he's in the Earth Kingdom, uh, the Earth Kingdom garb. Uh, three, put your 3D glasses on. Kapow, kapow! <laughs> fire, fire! Uh, no, I like that he's in the Earth Kingdom clothes, so you get the nice contrast of the green to the red. That's cool. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. It's, yeah, I don't even know how. I guess the only other thing you can see him in. Hmm, maybe I would prefer White Lotus. I mean, White Lotus maybe. would be cool with the blue with the red. That's. Yeah. Be a neat look. I do plan on, I do plan on making a custom Iro and White Lotus garb. That actually sounds uh, and awesome. Then, then I got this uh, top one, which is. Uh, I, I have one issue with this top one here. Looks great. Great. Like Diamond Sled, I love how they use the their diorama. They call this a diorama, not just a statue, because they use, I mean, it does it mimic a diorama. Just makes me think of community because uh, that's the only place I in know, public right? I hear the I mean, word I, diorama. Yeah, uh, the one issue I have with this statue is that Toph never bends like this. She never bends with her feet up. I've never seen her bend like that before. It's also always hands. And stuff. That's not her form like, of never, martial artistry. Yeah, like Earthbenders do use her feet quite often, but I've never seen Toph use this type of form or the, technique before. The only place I can think of, and you know, it's I mean, it's not canon; it doesn't count, and I could be wrong. I think in the video game, there's moves uh, where she kicks, but that does. I mean, it literally doesn't count in my opinion. <laughs> so I would have to agree with you. Just pointing out, there's like, yeah, a, like there's a familiarness to it, and I think it's from the video game. I think you're right, but let's not talk about that Unlike game. Not the, you know, the park, yeah, that's not a that's not a horrible video game, but I don't care to discuss it. I'm upset at Avatar video games as a whole right now. I'm just gonna blame the yeah. whole the whole sweeping universe of them. And speaking of Caitlin Clark, my video needs to refresh, so my wife, who's right over here, can keep watching. <laughs> There she is. Hi, Heather Hand. Uh, mm -hmm. Chris, Heather and I went on vacation last week, and basketball is not particularly big in Mexico. It's very hard to watch Ooh. the NCAA tournament what? or any NBA games that have heavy playoff implications at the moment, and that was a little frustrating. And uh, just for fun, when I got home, I was like, you know, it's not very big there. I wonder how many Mexican born NBA basketball players there are. And like actively in the NBA right now, I think there was like two. And I want to say it was like Juan Toscano, Anderson. I mean, you, even if you just count just Hispanic Americans, I can't think of. You know, there's, I would say there's probably a fair number of, of mixed American born Hispanic Americans. Now, people People who speak Spanish, that's different. Yeah. <laughs> um, but also, uh, like, Mexico like Mexico City is huge. But then it just got me down this rabbit hole of, like, Googling, like, average height of Mexican-born people, which is not a very tall number. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, the average height of, Ameri of an American man is, like, what, five? 
in. I think we're close, right? Like we're probably right on the border. I'm, I'm putting average. myself at the yeah, I'm putting myself at the yeah. average. I'm not gonna I like I'm five <laughs> nine I say I'm five ten, I'm five nine and if if I take away the masculinity like pride that I have in it for no reason, I'm probably five nine and a half. I say I'm five ten. <laughs> but uh, I say I'm five ten and I'm pretty I'm pretty sure I'm like barely five nine. Yeah. But with shoes with shoes on I have shoes on all it is a masculine. Isn't it, it weird? Like we can't control yeah. it, but like there's a weird pride in it. It's not like weight, right? Like you control your weight, you lose a bunch of weight, or you're really in shape. Like okay, you'd be proud of that, but like height? Why are we proud of height? Why are we proud of that extra half inch? But that don't you know? That's a weird question. Don't laugh at that, Heather. They... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was a big rabbit hole, and I looked around, and like so, like right now, it's like Juan Toscano Anderson and like one or two other guys, and then there's a guy that used to play at Oklahoma. You might remember him. His name is Eduardo Nahara, uh, and he played in the NBA a couple of years, and he pissed me off when he was at Oklahoma a bunch. But anyway, big rabbit hole. No basketball last week. No Avatar last. There's no Nick. There was. I'm sure there is Nickelodeon. Uh, not a lot of cartoons. We mostly just sat by pools. It was great. But I'm finally going. Me and my wife finally going on vacation. We've never been on vacation ever. I've been married. I can't recall that you've ever been on 14. vacation. <laughs> <laughs> We've been married 14 years. We've never what? gone. Never went on a honeymoon, or vacation, or anything. And so we're going on a cruise coming up soon. Very excited about that. Oh, that's awesome! When are you going? Uh, July sometime. We just had that conversation earlier about vacations being white people stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um, <laughs> July, that'll be awesome. Uh, you know, if you're going to be really hot anyway, you just will be hot with delicious food and buy water. Yeah. And it's a no kid. My wife was like, "What type of cruise would you like to go on?" And I was like, "The woman is there a woman with no kids?" She was like, "Yeah, Royal doesn't have kids. Not Royal, Virgin doesn't have kids." I was like, "That one." That's kind I don't of funny. Hear for... I don't want to. <laughs> That's clever naming convention. Heather, do you like, know I Virgin even... cruises don't allow kids? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh. uh great choice i think that you i say i think you're gonna enjoy it. i've never been on a cruise i assume you're gonna enjoy it i assume i am too hopefully how bad would it be if you came back you're like that sucks It'd be embarrassing <laughs> well great chris let's talk about some some news uh i'll mm-hmm. let you i'm gonna let you guide most of this because like i said what you've told me is what i know those three sentences all right, so the big news is is that Albert Kim, the showrunner of Avatar Netflix season one, is stepping down. And I'll go ahead and read the Hollywood Report reporter thing about it uh, because they're a very good website. That anyway, <clears throat> showrunner Albert Kim, who replaced creators Michael Dante DiMartino and Brian Konietzko, is also editing the Netflix live action series. That first off doesn't even sound good. <laughs> Co-executive producer Christine Boylan and executive producer Jabbar, sorry if I mispronounced his name, Ray Sani, both of whom were hired by Kim, will take over as the drama's third showrunners for the previously announced second and third seasons. Sources say Kim's intentions, intention was to lay the foundation for season one of the show after stepping in for the beloved franchise's creators. Given the long turnaround time and crafting the series, Netflix ordered it in 2018. Okay, well, that's irrelevant. Uh, sources say Kim was ready to move on to new opportunities. Then, Kim, whose resume, I don't care about that, he said he will remain on as a cre- credited as an executive producer on the Avatar Last Airbender. That honestly means absolutely nothing. He'll probably have nothing to do with the show, just, just to keep his name on it. It's like <laughs> soothe, soothe people over here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as he is expected to sign a development deal with Disney's 20th television uh, he'll start developing projects for Disney. He'll also be an executive producer on the Percy Jackson show. Um, da, 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 da. And then it goes on to talk about the new showrunners. Boylan. Credits include Leverage, Castle, Once Upon a Time, The Punisher, and more recently, Pokerface and Citadel. Most of those are fairly well-liked shows. Uh, especially The Punisher. At a the producer and popular. popular. Yes, yeah. Uh, the producer and playwright is nominated for Writers Guild of America Award as part of the team behind Peacock's Poker Face. I do hear like amazing stuff about Poker Face. 
I just haven't watched it. And I still have Peacock from that darn football game they had. That a one football play. game, yeah. They they got did, me. No, no they watch, got my wife. They got my wife. Do you ever watch Twisted Metal on there? Is that worth I I'm very nostalgic for the game, but I'm not gonna buy it to watch a show that I know is probably bad. I did not I'm not, I've never played the game. Oh, okay. Well never mind then. It's well then it'd probably be worse to you. You'd be watching you like this is non nostalgic trash. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um da, 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 da. Oh, both has worked both of them have worked on both of them worked on Avatar. Um the the Netflix show. Both of the new showrunners have. Uh, I probably said that. Anyway, Razani, executive produced season one and also served as a director on episodes three and four. Episode three was good. Uh, that was one where they crossed oh, like a lot of the different stuff. They crossed over this episode with the mechanist and even in Secret Tunnel. Yeah, three and, and four combined uh, like five episodes yeah. total or something. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a good one. Hmm? Uh, and then four was, it was all right. Well, even if issues. you, uh, even if you don't love them, which like four, I didn't love it, but those had to be the most, gosh, those might've been two of the three or four most complicated episodes to put together yeah. because of those yeah. differences. Yeah. Yep. So good. Good. Uh, yeah. uh, and then, so he was also, uh, VFX supervisor. So that's cool. And then. That's pretty much it. Um, but yeah, like, what do you or I think about this news? I'm going to give you my instant reaction because it's pretty boring, Chris, is I think okay. that, I don't know if what he said is like like 100% true or it's just speak, but I think it is going to work just fine and we're going to notice very little because you have done season one. You pretty much know where the other things are going. It might be like, I don't know, minor tone things or whatever, but... Mm. Like, like the foundation really is there. And so I whether or not he actually intended to do that or it just worked out that way, I, I feel like it's not going to feel abrupt or, or weird. And I don't really think it signals anything bad or anything like that. It, I, I'll keep going. Sorry. No, no, it, I, it might've caught me a little by surprise and that's about all I'll give it. Yeah. I, let me first. Say, you know, sometimes people leave projects and you're unsure if they were fired or if they themselves decided to leave. Um, because it's always like, oh, amicable, or oh, so someone's so a person left. I think he actually decided to leave. I don't think he was fired from the show at all. Um, Grant, that's just my opinion, my very limited knowledge, but I don't think he was fired because they brought in the writers or in the people he, he hired to finish it off. Um, yeah, that. Yeah, agreed completely. Yeah, and then so you know, what do I think is impacts like you? I don't think this would be a huge impact. Um, <laughs> I think it would be like you said, the foundation was very important. I think it. I don't think there'll be much change for better or for worse. I think if anything, the next season will be better, and season three will be better, just because. Season two and three of Avatar is better than season mm-hmm. one. But people might feel like, oh man, they really. <laughs> like, if season two and three completely meet everyone's expectations, it might not necessarily be because of them. Maybe it would be. But season two and three are just inherently better than season one of Avatar. If it is different, it would be in a way that, like, would be sort of unprovable, unpredictable. Like, it's most likely just going to feel like nothing happened. I. Bit. But that's good. That's that's a good type of transition that he got what he wanted out of it, and that we don't think yeah. there's any like any worse for the wear on our side. That's good. Yeah, and I think I think he left. I think I know it's hard, sometimes hard to just believe what people say, especially in Hollywood. But I think he came on to Avatar. Like Mike and Brian brought him on um, to to help with the show, and when they left. I'm sure Netflix was just like, well, hey, you have experience being a showrunner. Can you just do it? And he was like, sure, I can do it. Um, but, but that's not what he signed up for. He didn't sign up to be the showrunner of Avatar, which comes with its own, you know, stresses and, and work and stuff. And so he didn't he didn't sign up for that. He probably wanted to be more of an executive producer and, and other stuff rather than be the showrunner. So maybe he just did. 
Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Good. No, just maybe he did want just want to do something else. When this, that commitment ramped up, and uh, oh, because it ended up taking you know years, right? It wasn't like it wasn't like, hey, can you take over this for a couple months since Brack left? It's like, no, this turned. <laughs> this was a multiple year career shift for him essentially. So, um, but, you know, good, good. I hope that he got what he wanted out of it, and hope that uh, you know, hope that he has success. I appreciate what he what he's done here for the most part, at least. Yeah, and I and like, I, well, I think the show's great. I love the show personally. I think objectively, probably a a really good show. Um, I love it personally, but I think he did a great job in being a showrunner. It is a tall, tall task to take a twenty-year-old beloved animated series and turn it into live action, where Live action does feel different. You might have to do different things. And I think he did a great job in doing this adaption in the sense of like, it's, it's just a tall, like, I, I don't, I, I know he could could have done better, <laughs> but yeah, yeah it, but... he did. I think he did a great job doing it, working with what he had, coming in, filling in for break. So I, I, I commend him and I, and I wish him the best. Anytime you mess with something that a lot of people love a whole lot, like it's a it's a big risk. Uh, somebody's gonna be unhappy regardless, right? That's part of the deal. So you know, there's mm-hmm. some uh, there's some bravery okay. involved. Some so yeah. Um, it, I don't know. It sounds enviable, right? Like it's a big deal, but no, it's got its downsides if you're picking up a one of the more popular properties. And, yeah, I was talking with make your own. I was talking with somebody about I think I was talking with, with Mike about season adapting season two and then just kind of talking through it like, wow, this is tough. This would be tough. Like what do you do? What do you cut? Like it's it's a hard freaking job. Like and everyone thinks they can do it, I'm sure. Everyone thinks they have the best. Idea. Everybody well, and everybody thinks they have thin skin until you have I don't know, tens of thousands of angry people, even if you do a good job, something the size of this, until you have tens of thousands of angry people, you know, Mm -hmm. saying like outlandish, like unacceptable things because that's what people do on social media about you and your family or, you know what I mean? That everybody thinks that they're tough until you got to put up with something like that. Yeah. Some people in the, I wouldn't even say fandom because I don't consider them, I hate being a gatekeeper. (laughs) But I'll be a gatekeeper on this. Uh, you're there not are a gatekeeper because they had a chance to come in, right? We we accept everybody into watching the show, but then if you watch the show, <laughs> you treat other people. If you watch this show yeah. <laughs> and you treat other people really horribly, you did you did you watch it? Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> did like, you the, the thing is, and like I had this thought about, um. Just about fandom in general, because I was thinking about man, some parts of the after fandom is absolutely terrible. Granted, that's, and then I started thinking, so well, that's every fandom. Like DC, there are certain parts that are really terrible. Every um, every big fandom like, for sure. Yeah, and then I thought to myself, oh well, this goes beyond fandom. Like if I think about people who claim to be Christians and they don't act to me, they don't act Christian like like they they you know they I don't know it's it's like people accept things as long as it makes them feel comfortable, and then they just disregard. Oh yeah, but, yeah. But, oh boy, this game is close. Yeah, I got it <laughs> over here, man. We got a what are they? Timeout with eight seconds? Was there eight or nine? Nine seconds. Cool. Uh, nine point three. Yeah. Yeah, solid. All right, well, just in case uh, our streams are off, I like slightly off. I won't. <laughs> I won't react. Yeah. But but uh, also uh, do want to point out that they didn't make it a big deal. That they had like a a lot of Asian talent behind and in front of the camera, and the new showrunners, to my understanding, are <laughs> well. Maybe one is I can't tell from the from, the, from looking at them and stuff. He's at least he, he, they don't seem Asian, or at least they don't, he might seem. I don't know. They might seem uh, not to discount uh, East Asia. He might, well, not East. I mean South A- South Asia. Um, or Middle East, somewhere around there. Yeah. Hey, anyway, diversity is great, you know, but the show wasn't originally 
written by that <laughs> diverse group of people either. So <laughs> whatever, just yeah, no, I, I, people I, behind <laughs> the camera. <laughs> no, to me, it's not a big yeah deal. Like, hey, I I love to see a black person get in there and yeah, and, 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 yeah, that could be me if they want. You know, I'm coming <laughs> up with great Zettel stories. Chris, they uh, got an opening right now. You just missed the application <laughs> deadline. And I think it sounds like they already filled those positions. The thing is, so many people are like, "Ah, oh, man, whoever they before they announce who they were replacing him with, you know, I hope they replace him with true fans." I was like, "That could be a good or a bad thing." Like, I mean, real, real fan. Fan of again, what's a true fan? Is a is a true fan uh-huh. you or is a true fan a person who? only really loves it exactly as it is and would prefer not to see it change you know like yeah <laughs> yeah i don't i don't think there could be a true true fan of like can't change anything and like it's all like no you got to make some concessions yeah so uh, no yeah. i hope you got to be, you gotta be with... willing oh that's a oof i'm not sure if i like that call. i don't either yeah uh, that's like the same thing <laughs> <laughs> like uh, that's that's pretty yeah, soft i want it it seemed pretty soft. Like, and I'm all for calling something that is a call. Because I, I hate in, in, in the NFL when someone's like, don't call that at that time. But no, it's clearly holding. Or it's clearly whatever. Call it. Like, But that just, didn't look like a call. I'm all on the consistency. Like, If you're going to call it, that's cool. But I hope that's how you've been doing it the whole game, not just right now. Yeah. Then, it's, then it's not the time to change, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I don't like the NFL argument of like, you can't make that call. Well, you can if you did it. At the other yeah. points, then you sh- should, yeah. yeah. Anyway, anyway, uh, <laughs> only a little bit to but, shred. <laughs> but uh, no, I think I think it'll be, you know, I think I think I think the shows only get better because they learn some things. And I'm not saying that they should even. I hate when people be like, "Hey," like, I hate when people online tries to reach out to creators and be like, oh, I hope you listen to the fans and whatever. I like, know they didn't ask for your opinion. Nah, they, like, if they, <laughs> <laughs> if they wanted your opinion, they could go and search it. Don't tag them and stuff and be like, hey, you need to do this. You need to focus on this. No, don't, don't, don't do that. The only uh, exception <laughs> is listening to Chris Ford's casting uh, suggestions. That's it. That's the one exception where they clearly did. No, I hope they put, well, obviously they already put people behind, but like you just want good people behind it. If you like the show, that are going to make it successful. Put yeah. qualified operators back there, not not us. <laughs> I was just saying, uh, Chris. I think the show will get better, like you said, because the show does just get better. I think the level of quality is probably going to be the same, and we probably won't notice that much, and that's fine. That's completely fine. I'm trying, to get my, I'm trying to get my Sprite sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> that's great if, uh, if you're sick and you're black drink Sprite yeah ours was 7-Up I don't know if that's a cultural difference or if it's just what we had in the fridge but okay but still same, same it's either, either 7-Up Sprite ginger ale either one of those because frankly it's cheaper than medicine let's face it <laughs> cheaper than meds <laughs> yeah Chris uh, one other minor bit of news I didn't pay attention to it at all I didn't even read it you pointed it out as a thing that happened, and I'm, I'm going to let you read it to me. <laughs> what is that? Uh, the Roku now You said Roku oh, novel Roku had novel. a new description. Okay. Yes, it does. The Roku novel that I am trying really hard not to pre-hate the Holy idea crap. of. Holy crap. Yeah, okay, you I didn't see it. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> that was actually great. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Like and time ticked off too. That's what. Yeah, I'm sorry, people. No, that's um, perfect. Roku... <laughs> I think people know that we like basketball. I think it's acceptable. Yeah. Let me see this again. Let's try to one. Ah, oh, they got point seven though. But still, she took some time off the clock. Uh, okay, Roku novelization because Roku got a new PR team. He got a new book <laughs> coming out in July. Because he heard our ratings of him relative to the other avatars. He's like, guys, what, yeah. what can we do about this? Yeah. Okay. Here is the new... Oh, they also have new art. Okay. Which I didn't tell you that, but there's new art. Um, and art looks good. Looks great. I'll pull it up um, on the phone. It's like... Okay. It's like young... And from the description, it looks like it takes place when he's still training in at the air temples. 
Okay. It says description oh, is that does look good. Curse curse a world that would provide a friend only to snatch him away. Roku never expected to be the Avatar. Even his best friend, Crown Prince Sozin the Fire Nation, doubts the accuracy of the Fire Sage's announcement. After all, Sozin is the strongest firebender of the generation. Aroku struggles to grasp basic airbending principles, even after months of training under Sister Disha, his airbending master. When Sozin's request when Sozin requests the new Avatar's aid in preventing the Earth Kingdom from claiming a remote Fire Nation island, it doesn't surprise Roku that Sister Disha advises him to decline. Convince the Earth King's aggressive expansion of territory po points to a more insidious agenda. Roku steals away with the help of an irritating young airbender named Yatso. As the reluctant companions <laughs> delve deeper into the wayward mission, they realize the fog-shrouded island harbors a secret that could lead to a c catastrophe in the wrong hands. Played by self-doubt but eager to confront the dangers ahead, Avatar Roku must learn where to place his trust and what it means to be a, a spirit of no nation, even if the lesson comes at a great personal cost. All right. Uh, uh, great. I mean, okay. Uh, you know, it just it feel, like the description you just had there feels like like a buddy cop movie or something where Roku is like the 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 talented. Not well. Sorry, no. He's the, he's not the talent. He's the clumsy young guy, and they pair him with this other. I don't know. Feels. Hmm. I just. I have yet to I, hear anything that makes me want to read this book that bad. You know the only, you know I'll think about today. The one thing that's going to make me excited to read this book is that Kyoshi should probably be in it. Okay, <laughs> and I'm just fair. Like, just let me listen to Kyoshi. Be like, like, I we we'll get to listen to. A Kyoshi who's lived 230 years. So I'm curious what she would share. Um, I know that's sad that my biggest excitement for the book is on one thing might not even happen. It too involves another avatar. Um, but one thing that I'm concerned, one thing I'm concerned about this book is that it is it is like retroactively. I feel like it might be retroactively trying to. Uh, Work on things, make them make more sense, like, or try to give reasons for Sozin taking over, also give reasons for Roku not handling Sozin the way he should have. Like, they're like, oh, the Earth Nation, the Earth Kingdom is trying to have aggressive expansion. Like, and then Sozin, I feel like by the end, they'll be like, oh, well, now Sozin has that in his idea. Like, he has to protect the Fire Nation and stuff. Like, don't give. Hitler a good reason for doing what he did. I don't even want any type of like <laughs> I don't want any type of story aspects that makes him seem more reasonable or or more sympathetic. And I'm I'm I'm, I'm a little afraid that they're going to make it that way. Uh, I've been using the phrase when we talk about it in the TV show I keep using the phrase like nerf. They're going to nerf the rough edges. They're going to nerf you know, you yeah. can just be oh. He could be a decent guy in a bad avatar. <laughs> like he could be like, oh man, you made some mistakes, uh, good intentions, bad means, or whatever, and just be a bad avatar. And that's fine. We can have a bad avatar. I don't know what else to say. Uh, yeah, we can have everyone can't be great. I mean, honestly, like I, I know we disagree on on um, one, but that, definitely after that, I think all the avatars are good avatars. Like, they're either yeah. great or they're good. I mean, yeah, and like the worst avatar that we know of is is probably just you know a desk jockey, and we're gonna fix his story. This we're just we're oh, yeah. gonna do the thing that we said you shouldn't do. Now, listen, Zeto's a fresh. He's a, <laughs> he's a fre what do you call it? He's a clean slate. We've got a, a, a blank canvas. Yeah, we've got room to work there. We're not nerfing anything. I think there is. I don't know why, but this last like three days, I've just been thinking so much about Avatar Zeto and and the uh, and our stories uh, that we might uh, we will one day we will come up and put down so much stuff. I um, love it. I think we should. I think we should somehow. Pers I can't decide how you know how to like. I can't I know decide the format how to of it. I don't. I don't, yeah, I don't know either. I'm just. I'm just putting thoughts down for now. Yeah, but I think there's a fun story to be. Chris, think about the contrast of a person 
who essentially contributes to like an uprise of of the Fire Nation, like the like the first worldization of the Fire yeah. Nation that we know later becomes the evil empire, right? And so he's like unknowingly contributing to that. Or maybe he is. Maybe he is kind of knowing. But then I don't, there's a lot of good like potential for character dichotomy of balancing his yeah. his daily life from his nightlife that we will share in our stories someday. Uh, that, you know, not, when I say nightlife like that, it makes him sound like a creep. No, <laughs> his adventures. Uh, even in um, you know, even in some of the stuff that Ying Chen has said about him, like there's a there's a part in the passage. It says, to an outside observer, he would have looked like a man with nothing to hide. In truth, however, his life was difficult, and he was considered a library of intrigue in the realm of spycraft and trickery. That's perfect. Like, yeah. That's perfect. And the, I just, I think the best part is that he almost has to strike a balance between three lives. Like, he's not just the avatar in this Fire Nation higher up. Right is you're you're throwing a third bit into the mix there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I just feel like he's got got great potential to uh, to have a good story told. So we'll fi- we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. How to... It feels like a comic book to me. It feels like it it does to me also, and I don't know how. <laughs> Maybe that's just like bias, but it feels like it should be in a series of short, uh, short stories, like three parts. Yeah, yeah. Into yeah. Uh, I don't know how we're gonna <laughs> probably use AI somehow, but some but some AI that that's legit, like that doesn't steal. I don't know if that even exists. But... Well, I don't know about doesn't steal, but like open AI, <laughs> like Chat GPT, is is trained, and so by trained, I mean that it sort of has limitations on what it can and can't give to you. But that's not for pictures; it's just for well, at least I don't think so, just for text. Yeah. Uh, or. We'll figure it out, though. We'll tell that story somehow. And also, I like that we don't know what happens to him, right? That's the biggest downfall with the Roku thing is we know how it ends. Absolutely. We have yeah. no idea what like, Zuc- what Zeto, what happened to Zeto or the Fire Nation at that time. There's nothing down about that. Yeah. <laughs> like we know we know Gatso lives. We know yeah. Sozin lives. We know. <laughs> we know I mean, yeah. the ending yeah. of that story. <laughs> You know what's funny though? What's interesting mm-hmm. is that if like Sozin and Gatso know each other, that would make their conversation in the live action show like more interesting. Yeah, that's fair. And... Granted, that's not. I'm, I'm combining canon with non-canon with thing. Non, yeah. Just imagine if like they knew each other, and then Sozin arrives, and and like Gatso's like Sozin, like I knew from early time that that you're. Your, uh, your, dang it, why can't I think of it? The, your determination, no, not your determination. Your reach outweighs your morality or outreaches your, anyway, something to that in sense. And then, you know, he also gets killed by Sozin. Uh, but anyway, that's me randomly thoughts. No, I think, and listen, my complaints to the book, like it could, it could turn out to be a well written book and, and it will most likely have some, yeah. some, I'm sure canonical I'll... value. I just, yeah. I just Same, wish they would sure a different like... target. I'm sure I'll read the book. Yeah, I'm sure I'll like the book. Which, which I don't know why I'm complaining about like possibly liking something. Um, it's just yeah, I, I would have liked a different answer. We, we the, know what Roku's up to. You know, it's the Roku's Star Wars out. thing, man. Like you got a infinite yeah. universe. Pick something else. Yeah. Pick yeah. something else. Anyway, Chris, uh, was there? Was there anything else you wanted to hit in this episode specifically? We had a. Uh, we sh- thought about talking about um, speculating on why Breck might have left, but oh yeah, yeah. I I would welcome your thoughts based on our season one knowledge. Yeah, right. Because well, I think we'll save it for another time. Okay, I thought this episode okay. would be shorter than that. Um, unless I can gather, I don't know, more thoughts. That's fair. That's fair. I think now yeah. after season one is the time to do it, right? Because they left during the development yeah. of season one. But I'm totally in favor of shelving that for another time. Well, it, hey, no, this is the perfect wrap up then. Chris, thanks <laughs> for being here. Everybody else, thank you for being here. Like, comment, sub, bell, positive review, whatever, whatever form of positive interaction you want to give us, 
we appreciate it. It feels great. And thanks for watching Avatar The Last Podcasters. We will catch you next time. Yeah. Chat GPT, we are a podcast. <laughs> it's been around for years. <laughs> Got a new grudge against you, even though we just threatened uh, to use it to write a book. <laughs> <laughs>